you ever been out there camping and you're like, I want to go camping. I mean, you want to be homeless for a couple of days. I get it. It makes sense. But I don't understand this. It's expensive to go out in the woods and take a nap. And you don't sleep good, but it's expensive. Go to R, go get you some damn camping equipment and go act like you're miserable in the damn woods and see how good that feels. Let me know. Oh, I got the damn camera backwards. My God. Let me flip this son of a bitch around. Y'all got to see my damn truck. Well, y'all can look at my leg for now. I ain't, I ain't spinning this thing around. I'm not doing it. I'm growing a mustache and I want to have a big reveal for it. Okay? It's a gay stash, and I don't care, man. It doesn't matter. It's a little broomstick. You know what I'm saying? It's that dick sweeper. That's what I call it sometimes. You know, dick sweeper on my damn stash, man, on my damn upper lip. So anyways, I'm down here. I'm going to go camping, and I don't want to camp because I think camping is for ridiculous people that want to sleep in the woods and act like they're one with nature. But anyways, I digress. I went to REI to go over there and find something to go camping with because I was for a while there thinking that survival was the ultimate mechanism to the world. And I didn't want to survive, man. I fucking, I want to live off of beanie weenies and fucking, I want to eat steak. I want to go to a gas station that's still got roller hot dogs on it. I want to go to Kroger or Publix or Wendy's or Whole Foods, wherever I want to go, when I want to go there. I don't want to have to think, oh my God, I got to go grow a vegetable? No way, man. Y'all have all that shit. I'm out. I don't want to grow anything and have to survive off of it. I got to go kill a pig or a deer or some kind of ox or something? I don't know, man. Could you wrestle an alligator to the death? Probably not me. I don't think I could. I would try, but I don't think I could. Now, I'll tell you this. I don't want to go. I don't want to do it. I don't want, to. I was in REI, and by the time I survived, I, I was gonna be homeless. By the time I bought all the shit in there to, to fucking go camping, I mean, I just bought myself a damn house in the woods. I had to sell my damn house. I had to sell my damn house. All right, I'm with my damn cock right there. Like, I got a small under average cock, so don't, don't sweat it, man. Anyways, back to my camping stories. So I had this idea that I was gonna be out there in the woods, and I was gonna find some berries and eat them. Be like that guy from, uh, where they did that, uh, that went out to Alaska, stayed in the bus, into the wild, right? It'd be like that guy. He started, he was from, he was from Georgia and Atlanta. He started himself to death, fucking idiot. Anyway, he wrote a book, you know, whatever. Eddie Vedder sang a song about him. It's a great album, by the way. But it, I don't want to be that guy eating berries out there. I thought I did. And I got out there, I used to go, I go fishing, you know, kind of camping, slash fishing out in the woods. And I tell you, man, after six hours, I'm dying. I can't, I'm done. Put a fork in me, man. I mean, send me back to the hotel. Give me a motel. I don't care if it's a damn a damn camper. I had a camper one time, but I'm just telling you, don't make me go live in the woods in a tent. And you people that want to go do it, that's fine. But don't make me feel guilty for it, because I don't want to feel guilty for not wanting to go camping. It's ridiculous. I mean, think about it, man. You're wanting to invite me to go stay in the woods with you? What are you wanting to do to me? My God. I can't imagine the horror of waking up to you in the morning out of a tent. God, you got that half 40-year-old erection going? Get your damn life together. I ain't going camping with you, you sorry sack of shit. I'm going to sit here at the house. I'm going to watch people go camping. That's what I'm going to do. Fuck everything else. I like to watch people. It's the same thing, man. I watched one time, I watched a show about making a, 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 a back deck. You know, you get out, you make a deck. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You go outside, you sit on the deck, you have a barbecue, they have great pictures at Home Depot, at Ace Hardware. Great pictures of decks, right? You can just like walk in and be like, man, that's a cool deck. And so one day, I was like, I'm gonna figure out how to build a deck. I don't wanna build a deck. And I don't want to survive in the woods. But so I was going to build a deck. And I was like, this will be fun. You know, like, woohoo! I don't know what I was doing. And so I was building, I was, I watched a show on it. It was on HGTV. You know, that channel where you watch stuff. And you watch the experience of doing it. And you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to do that. That does not look like that much fun. So I just allowed uh, Ty Pennington or whatever some of those guys' names are on HGTV to go ahead and let me just experience what it would be like to build a deck. Therefore, I never built a deck. So that's kind of fun. 
you know. That's a little fun fact about your old boy over here. No cowboys, what well, they try to call me. But again, back to like kind of survival or the cowboy thing. It just kind of brought this up in my head. But I, I was watching that show one time on on uh, Paramount called Yellowstone. You ever seen Yellowstone? Great show. Uh, very weird sexual energy in that show that I'm not sure about because I did feel like Kevin Costner wanted to fuck his daughter. And I could be wrong, I don't know. But it definitely felt like it could be, like there was some sort of whatever that word is that you use for fucking your sister or your brother. I don't know if fucking your brother is considered incest, but if it is, I apologize. I forgot what I was talking about, though, just then. I was going into the, um... Fuck, man. I don't want to survive camping. Then I was going to go to the, uh... The, uh, camping, camping, camping. And then, um... Speaking of... Oh, oh, Paramount. Yeah, the sexual energy with Paramount. So, look, man. Kevin Costner was trying to have... And I'm sorry about that. Just come on back to me. I'll, 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 I'll give you $2 back on your tickets. I don't have tickets. It's free to get here. It's actually, this is a fucking open mic, so fuck you. Anyways, so Kevin Costner, they have this sexual energy, but you know, whatever. And so you get into the show, and you're watching, and they're killing each other. Like, it's, I mean, it's a cool ranch, because you don't know if you're going to live or die. Like, that's kind of fun. You're like, I want to ride a horse. That's kind of hot, I mean, I guess. And you want to have, like, hot chicks that are just cowgirls, and you're like, dude, if chicks are this hot, I am definitely going out there to ride a horse. Anyways, so you watch it, and you're like, I want a ranch. I was watching with this girl one time, and she's like, uh, I'm like, oh, I want to go live in the woods, and I want a ranch. I'm like, okay. That sounds like you're an idiot, right? I mean, come on. You want to live in the woods and raise horses? You know how much money that ranch is worth and how much money it makes? I mean, look, you're watching the richest of the rich do this right now. You're watching Dallas. You're basically watching a new version of Dallas. They just kill everybody to get what they want. The rich get the rich, you know, whatever they want to call it. I don't care. I like it, dude. I like I like that there's still the wild, wild west out there. I think it's fun. What I wouldn't do, though, if when they make things like that look simple, which is what I think it's fun, where you're like, hey, people are like, hey, man, hey, I could be a cowboy. You can't even get up out of your bed and tie your shoes. You can't wipe your ass from back to front. You got to wipe your front to back. I don't know what that means, but I think that that's probably true. You're probably fatter than a goddamn gorilla. Get your ass together. Wake up. You're not going to be a cowboy. God, you probably couldn't sign a damn horse if you tried, but you'll take it in the ass with your girlfriend. I don't know what's worse. You tell me. Look, man. I'm in Florida now, where I know there's horses, and I know there's girls, and I know there's Tinder, and I know there's all that stuff down there. I met a girl on Tinder. I met one girl on Tinder. I don't know what... Listen, man, I met the... I, I don't... I think she's a KBG operator. I don't know. She's why... Listen, I don't know... I don't even know her last name still. Still don't know her last name. She called me the other day. I think she called me another name. I said, I'm going with it, man. I've been dating for like four months. Four months. She's older than I am, but God, I love her. I, I, I mean, I listen. I swear to God, right now, if she told me if she called me right now on my phone and told me to like strip down naked and crawl back on my back, I would do it. <laughs> I would fucking do it, man. One time we were making out, dude. I swear this really happened. We were. I mean, I think I've told this a little bit. I don't know if I told it the right way, but it, this may or may not be true. So just bear with it. But I had her on her knees. Like we were on our knees on making out, which is a very odd and peculiar situation when you're hanging out on your knees. Because if you she, if she lowers my britches, it's it's a very peculiar stance because you can't spread your legs. You're stuck there, right? So because you're stuck there, you have to figure out what you can do to make it worth your while. Sorry about that. I had to adjust my phone. I thought I was uh, talking into something else. So you had to adjust it, right? And I can't do anything. I can't spread my legs out, you know. But we're man, it's I mean, it is it, man. It I don't know, man. Kissing her is like kissing somebody when you're 17. It's like the, every time is like the perfect kiss. I'm not joking. Still to this day, it's well, like four months ago, right? It's still it's perfect. Oh, just her soft mouth just touches me. And I'm like, if I get aroused up here, I apologize. But 
if I, I'm just, I'm just letting you know, and, and I, I just eat a lot of peaches, man. I don't even take Viagra. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Um, I don't get hard. I get a semi-erection. Listen, I'm working with a half of wood most of the time anyway, so that's kind of fun, you know. It just squirts out on the side, you know. It's like a piece of Play-Doh, but it's got water on it. It's fun. It's a nice penis. But she was kissing me, man, and we were making out, you know, and I was like, God, this is fucking... I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come. If she touches my dick, I'm coming. No doubt about it, right? Like that's how I was. She wasn't even. She wasn't even touching me, man. I don't know if this is true. I think I dreamed about it one time. It may or may not. I don't know. But th this is how it plays out to me in my memory. So I'm sitting there, and she's like, "Hey." She starts kissing my neck. Real. I mean, like, I mean, kind of aggressive, but not too aggressive. But kind of like, like it was my first time I've been kissed on the neck, dude. It was insane. It's delicious. You know what I'm saying? You ever had that kiss that just gives you the hardest erection? You're like, oh, man. Every time, dude. Every fucking time. Right? So we're sitting on the couch. On my knees. And she's making out. Not touching my wee-wee. But she got my pants pulled down. And she's kissing my neck. And I see her out of the corner of my eye, man. She spits in her hand. And I, I, a little, I get a little concerned. Because I don't know what the fuck's about to happen. I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to say what it was. And she leaned that little head. She pulled my little head down into her ear, and she said, "Do you mind?" And before I could answer that question, she had stuck that saliva-soaked finger straight up my asshole. I came immediately. finished I came immediately it was horrible but great at the same time I don't know but it was a moment actually I think I just had a moment speaking of that though man you remember growing up like speaking of hard-ons for no reason one time I get this hard-on man like when you were as a kid you, remember, you, you got an erection as a teenager dude it was Listen, to relive those glory days of putting shit in holes that you could you could, you could have sex with a watermelon, a cantaloupe. It didn't matter this time of year. Do that heat of, you put that you put your wiener in a cantaloupe right now. I mean, that might be pretty fun. I might do it tonight. I don't know. It seems like it could be pretty erotic. I, I don't know if it should be. It seems like it could be. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to say if I've ever done that, but. It, I don't know. It, I grew up on a farm. That's all I'll say. But I grew up on a farm where things happened that probably shouldn't have happened. You know, we we, 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 we killed goats and ate them on the on the farm. We ate chickens. We, we threw chickens in the like in the wall. Like, we did some things. We did some things. I think I caught my brother trying to make love to a goat one time. I'm not sure. He didn't admit it, but the big boots were back there. So it's possible. It's definitely possible. So growing up out there, it was crazy. I mean, we'd have my, my grandmother. I caught her one time touching herself in her bed. Like, that was wild. I found my, uh, I, the first time I tried to buy a pornographic magazine, I walked into the into the shop. I was about 14. I had a full erection because I was wearing umbros. So the first time I walked in to buy one, the guy wouldn't let me buy one. But because, you know, he knew that I had an erection, because he was probably a pedophile or something, who knows, but because I had an erection, he handed me a magazine that had already been opened and it was like, hey man, just go shoot yourself off in the bathroom. And I I did go to the bathroom and I did shoot myself off, but it was very troubling to do it. It was a fun time to grow up in the South back then. It was quiet, it was fun, it was peaceful, erections were alive girls were crazy. Like, one time I dated this girl, man, she was hot as hell. I, I thought she was. I mean, in high school, you know, you just got that dick that just wants to touch things, you know? It's crazy. But anyway, she was, uh, I don't want to sit here and I don't have penis love. I have penis hate for my pants. But, uh, I, th I, I think I can make my, I think I can talk to it. But anyway, we started, I dated this girl. I was about 17. I was about 18. I don't know. I was probably 18 years old. And, uh, yeah, we're all about to go to college, and, and uh, she said, uh, come over to the house, you know, so I went over there, and I was going to hang out with her for a while, and uh, she was in the bedroom already, ready to go, fire in the hole, you know, becomes an 18-year-old with just a purple-headed warrior about to smash into a piece of vagina that's never been shaved, and I've never been more excited, so I go in there, man, and I'm like, let's do this thing, 
And so I start kissing her and I realize that she's got a stronger upper lip than I do. And I don't mean strong as in like, oh, that's cool. She's strong. No, I mean strong as she's got a god dang mustache that's stronger and bigger and thicker than mine at 18 years old. And I understand, ladies, I get the stash whipping, the waxing, the tipping, whatever you got to do to get rid of that thing. But if I like to kiss a smooth girl's face and I walk up on a five o'clock shadow, bro, I am not going to survive that time. You can't do it. You got to flip her over and fuck her from the back. That's the only way to do it. You can't do it. She had just gotten her braces off. I was looking forward to it. And by God, if it didn't turn into some sort of bull crap, you know, I mean, my God. That was my crush for a while. It turned into a, not a crush at all. But I'm not judging. It doesn't matter to me. I don't know how she's doing it anymore either. Yeah, but growing up was crazy, man. It was fun. Like, I had a, like, I was... I was telling a friend or a buddy here, I don't call him a friend yet. I don't like to call friends friends at all. It's very anticlimactic. Because you don't know what could happen. You can start dating soon. You never know. But I was telling him that, uh, you know, my father, he did, my, my dad passed away at, at 64 years old. He, he had cancer and it did kill him. Cancer got him. Got the best of him, he said. He, I was sitting on his deathbed one time. He's like, hey, John, come here. Because that's my name. And he said, uh, you know I'm dying, right? And I was like, Jesus Christ, Dad. Let's, let's reel that back a little, okay? Yeah, we know you're dying. This is a terrible situation. And for you, for a dying man, to tell me that you're dying? What am I doing here, man? Am I in a three-dimensional dream? What's going on? He got a good laugh out of that. My mom is a drug addict. She does heroin, cocaine, crystal meth, all on the same needle. And she's not good at it. I mean, she's good at it, but she burned through all my dad's money. So before my dad died, he changed his little estate that he had left over to put, give me and my brother and my sister some money. Not a lot, just enough to pay the lawyers, essentially. And then uh, then my mom still got the other half. He tried to take all of it from my mom because she ruined his life. So before he died, he made me go get some documents for him to sign. And he signed some documents. I was never on the insurance policy at all, just my mom. But he gave a big fuck you to my mom right before he died. And he took my mom off the life insurance policy. That's my time. 